praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John chapter 1, beginning with verse 36. John chapter 1, beginning with verse 36. Praise the Lord. John chapter 1. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, well, in the King James, what seek ye? But let me put it in modern English. What do you want? What do you want? So he hosted. Let us pray. Father God, we ask, Lord, that you would come down and minister through your servant. God, we need you. We constantly need you. We need your anointing. We need your wisdom. Lord, speak to me. Speak to hearts and lives, God, that they would be challenged and changed by the word of God today, Lord, that your, your, your spirit would Plant word in each heart and in each life. Lord, that they go from this place having made the decision on what they want. Lord, God, help them to choose Jesus, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus turned to his disciples and said, what do you want? And, you know, at that point, when Jesus comes to you and asks you, what do you want? Stoti hoshi. What is your answer going to be? Well, you know, we could all do all, all we could all, I, I, I would like to have a, my hand healed, okay? But even more so, I, I, I like the response of the disciples. When Jesus asked that question, what do you want? Look what, look what the disciples said. Uh, this, this amazed me, okay? This amazed me. I, I, I would have thought they would have said, well, teach us or, or show us something or, or, or uh, help us. But the, the disciples said to, to him, rabbi or teacher, where do you live? They wanted to know where Jesus lived. And, and there are a lot of people out there that, that are looking for something. There are a lot of people out there that, that need something, and, and, uh, and they need to know where you live. They need to know uh, whether, whether or not you're living for Jesus or whether you're, uh, whether you're uh, just going through the motions of being a Christian. And... and I, 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 I like this because Andrew and the disciples said, where do you live? And they followed Jesus. They didn't just go to church and, and meet the Messiah. They didn't just go to church and meet the, the rabbi or the, or, or the teacher or the master. They, but, they, but they said, we want to, to know where you live. And then they followed Jesus and they stayed with him. And that's what God wants you to do, is to follow Jesus and to stay with him. Jesus said, come and see. And, and they came and saw where he dwelt. And, 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 they, and they stayed with him that day, uh, for it was about the tenth hour. And one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And Andrew goes and... After he meets Jesus, he goes and finds his brother, Simon. Now, we all know about Simon. We, we, but I, I love what Jesus immediately says to him. He says, Simon, because you have come, if you will follow me, if you will, if you will be with me, if you will stay with me, I will change your life. I will change your name. I will change everything about you if you will if you will stay with me. And that's what Jesus says in, in the in verse 43. He says, He says to these men, follow me. He 
God's looking for people that will make a decision about what they want. Everything that you see and everything that you touch and everything that is around you will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. And you need to make the decision. You need to make the decision, am, am, I, am I going to, to uh, choose those things that pass away? Are those so important that I, I will avoid following Jesus? Or will you understand how, how radical th these men, Andrew and James and John and Peter, how radical it was for them to leave everything that they had? They, 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 they forsook everything that they had. I, 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 know, I know sometimes as a, as a human being, you, you, want, you, you want a little bit of pride. You don't, you don't want people to know that you sprained your arm, you know, especially playing soccer, you know, with showing off to the kids. You don't, want, you don't want people to know that, you know. But you understand that Jesus Christ has come, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And, and, and the, the problem that we have the problem that we have is that we, we're, we're, our minds are, are on other things. And, and that's what it says in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 4. He says, in verse 17, he says, there, Ephesians chapter 4, in verse 17. It says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk in the rest uh, as the rest of the Gentiles or as the rest of the, of the heathen walk, in the futility of their mind, uh, having their understanding darkened and being all alienated from the, lo the life of God because of the ignorance of, that is in them, because of their blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work unclean uh, uncleanness with greediness and and in in my outline it, it says there is a problem with a lot of people's heads a lot of people have head problems did you know that now turn to somebody and say, do, there are people around you that have head problems. And that's what he said in verse 17. He said, he said uh, I, I say, that, I testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. In the futility or in the, the vainness of their, or the vanity of their mind. See, the, the, the people who are not Christians, the people who have not seen Jesus, who have not said, uh, who have not heard Jesus ask the question, what do you want? They, they, they're, they're trying to get everything there is. They're trying to, to go around and, and grab a, a little bit of joy here and a little bit of happiness there. And, 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 and you know, they, they think that money and things will make them happy. But they don't realize that, that, that that they are walking in, in the emptiness or the vanity of their mind. And, and that's what it says here in verse 17. The word vanity means futility or emptiness. That which is wasted on nothing. In other words, these people who do not know Jesus Christ spend all their time on things that are really nothing. They, their, their mind has... Uh, uh, their mind invents ways to serve their flesh. They're, they, they, they're, they're selfish. They're, they're wanting everything for themselves. I, uh, one, one Mother's Day, we were, we were honoring mothers. And this one lady came up and said, I didn't get a rose. And I said, are you a mother? I didn't think she was, but... You know, I, she was older. 
And she says, no. And I said, don't you understand that we were honoring mothers? And that with, whether you got a rose or not was not the point. It was the point is that you are a child, and you had a mother. And, and, but but she, was, she was just being selfish. She, she wanted a rose for herself. Instead of understanding that we, we're thanking God that we had mothers that, that raised us and, 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 and for one reason or another caused us to, to, to find Jesus Christ and, and make him Lord of our life. Do you understand the influence of your mother had a lot to do with whether you're serving Jesus today? Some of it, most of it was good. Some of it may have been bad. But, but the influence of your mother caused you to sit in this building today and say, I want to choose Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. Uh, you know, it, there's a scripture that says that there's a way that seems right to us. But, what, but where does it go? It says it leads to death. There's a way that, if, if you're not a Christian here today, if you're not serving Jesus Christ with all your heart and all your life, and you just kind of added uh, ICA into your, uh, into your things to do list, you know, uh, uh, Saturday night I, I go to the bar, Sunday morning I go to church, or on Monday morning I go to work and, and curse like the devil, and if, 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 if Going to church is, is just something to add it to your uh, to-do list. Then, then I've got news for you. You, are, you have been blinded by the, the God of this world because there are greater things for you to do than, than, just, uh, than, than just live your life the way you're living it. Uh, Romans 1.28 says, And even as they did not like to retain God, in the knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. God gave them over to a reprobate. In other words, people who do not want to honor God as God. People do, who don't want to acknowledge that God is the God of the universe, that, that he created all things. Uh, uh, when, they, when they begin to, uh, to not acknowledge God, that they, have to, they have to have something to take God's place. You know, uh, I, and I, I've shared with you many times that, that, that there, are, there are scientists that, that have, have, um, uh, have been studying for years uh, how the world was formed, and, and now they, uh, they think they have found what is called the alpha particle, the, the first particle that existed, you know, that, that gave life, that produced everything else, everything around you that you see, okay, the, it's an alpha particle, okay? You understand you you did not come from Adam and Eve. You came from an alpha particle. But I, I'm here to tell you where did the alpha particle come from? Because because scientists will tell you that that something cannot come from nothing. I guess two nothings got together and produced something. Huh? Uh, uh, the the whole ideal is that they have, they have so, so turned their mind and, and so refused to, to honor God and so refused to believe that God is God that they, that they have made science their God. Let me ask you this morning, what is your God? What is the most important thing you do all week? What is the most important thing you do all week? Is it just a... Is it just a, I, I, I just, I, I, I can't understand. And Paul, Paul says that, uh, that the lost possess a reprobate mind. That means depraved mind. The word w was used to describe metals that were tested and were, and were, uh, and, and were so corrupted. These metals were so corrupted that they had become useless. You see, they have a problem with their head. A person who's not a Christian not only has a problem with their head, they have a problem with their heart. They have a problem with heart. Look at verse 18. It says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because 
of the blindness of their heart. Because of the blindness of their heart. A couple of Sundays ago, we, we talked about in, in, our, in our devotions, we, we, we read about seeing men as trees walking. Seeing men as trees walking. And, and I think a lot of times, a lot of times when, when Christians get saved, they, they're, they're kind of like this blind man that came to Jesus and, 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 and he, he heals their sight. And, and, and so that at least they can see people around them. At least they, at least they can see uh, uh, that, that there are people around them, but they see them as trees walking. Coming home from the, the picnic yesterday, my wife, my wife said, I, I, I was talking about the, the trees that were at, were at the park and, and that it will really be nice when the trees grow up and, and uh, uh, they'll, they'll provide a lot more shade. You know, I, if, if you weren't at the picnic, you don't understand, but the, they, they have planted trees all over this park and it's really nice. It's a nice park, but it'll be nicer when the trees grow up and provide a lot of shade and and we were silent for a minute, and my wife said, the trees have names. My wife said, the trees have names. And I thought, I don't think those trees have names. <laughs> and then I realized that we were watching people. We were looking at people walking down the street. And many of us, we, we were so caught up in ourselves that we... That, that when we pass people, we just think of them like we would a tree. Well, that tree's in my way. That tree's not going to bother me. I, I have to move out of the way for that tree, you know. But God wants to touch your eyes, and he wants to show you the people around you and to show you that, that, that the trees that you walk with, that you rub shoulders with, that you touch every day, they have names. And, and, but if you don't know Jesus Christ, not only do you not see the, the trees, uh, the men as trees walking, you don't see them. You, you just see them as problems. You see the people around you. And, well, I've got to get around this situation. I've got to, I've got to finagle some way or another to get, get this done from this person. And I've got, to, I've got to talk this person into helping me in this area. And, and you, just use, you see people as things to be used rather than realizing that, that God has created us all to worship him. Word, the word blindness in this text means uh, refers to stubbornness. It speaks of a heart that when it's confronted with the truth, refuses to believe the truth. You know, most of us know the, the, the verse of Scripture, you shall know the truth. It, it will set you free. But, see, that's only the last part of the thought Jesus was, view, was giving. It, because if you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, what truth are you talking about? Are you talking about the Pravda newspaper? Uh, what, what, what truth are you talking about? But Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you, set you free. And, and, and these people who are, who are not believers, these people who are not following Jesus Christ, these these people that don't care where Jesus lives. They're blinded to, to, to the truth. And, they, and so they start making up their own truths. They start, they start, uh, they, they start deciding what, what they want to believe is truth. And, and Paul says this in Romans. He says, he says that they hold the truth in unrighteousness. They hold the truth in unrighteousness because... They're, they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. They're, 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 they're making the decisions on truth based upon on where they think they are and, 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 and how much they see and how much they understand. And they don't realize that, that when it says they hold the truth in unrighteousness, it's, you, could, you could translate that they oppress the truth. They oppress the truth with unrighteousness. Uh, because their stubborn, stubbornness in their hearts, they, they se they're separated from the life that, that could be theirs in Christ. And they remain trapped in the darkness and the depravity of, uh, of their condition because they don't realize. They don't realize that Jesus Christ came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. In, in Ephesians, Paul says uh, that 
these people are dead in their trespasses and sins. They're dead in their trespasses and sins. And, and, and it, it's important you understand that, that a person who is not living every day for Jesus Christ is dead. Now, Jesus Christ did not come. He did not come to, to make bad people good. A lot of us think Jesus Christ came to make bad people good. He did not. He came to make dead people alive. You see, if he came to make bad people good, there are a lot of people out there that, that never show off when they're tra- playing football. There, there are a lot of people out there that, that, that you know, that never get proud, but they're, they're humble and they're, they're kind and they're considerate and, and, and they're good people. Some, some of them are better than you are. And if Jesus only came to make bad people good, then, then good people don't need Jesus. But you see, Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. The human race did not merely get sick when Adam sinned. It died. Did you hear me? When Adam sinned, it didn't just get sick, it died. Now, I know that physically Adam and Eve did not die, but spiritually, the minute they sinned, they died. And, and so from that moment on, it was necessary that somebody come and raise the human race from, from the dead. Uh, Rome, Romans 5.12 tells us that uh, just as, as though one man, uh, through one man, through one man, Sin entered the world through another man, through the second Adam. Life has come. And, and if you will accept Jesus Christ, he, he will take away the blindness of your heart. If you will accept Jesus Christ, uh, the, that condition, their understanding is darkened, will be healed and and. and Take, it'll, God will take away your spiritual darkness and your spiritual ignorance and, and, and will, will cause you to be able to see. Not only do they have a problem with their, their heads and a problem with their hearts, they have a problem with their, their hands or with the works of their hands. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 19 says, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness and greediness. Because the lost are dead, Paul says they are past feeling. They they don't feel the way an alive person feels. their, Their feelings are dead. Uh, the phrase means that they have lost their sense of pain. They've lost their sense of pain. I, I, I saw a, a report on on the news that there there's this one girl that is being raped, and she she's very special in the sense that she does not feel pain. She has no sense of pain at all, and and so. And so he, she, if, if her pant leg catches on fire, she won't know it. If, if she puts her hand on the stove and the stove is hot, hot, she won't know it because she has lost her sense of pain. And so she, somebody has to be with her constantly, has to watch over her constantly and make sure that, you know, if she, if she kicks something with her foot, you know, as she's going through the house, you know, she doesn't jump around. Oh, oh, oh! No, she do, she doesn't know it. And her foot may be bleeding, or her her foot may be broken, and she doesn't know it because she cannot feel pain. Well, that's that's the same way that unbelievers are. They they don't feel spiritual pain. They don't understand that their sins are killing them. They don't understand that when they sin, it's like the fire on, in, on, the, on the leg of that girl that has, that has no sense of pain. Uh, it it, it, it begins, starts there, but it will consume them. The sin will consume them because they, they do not have a sense of spiritual pain. 
And the report said this girl has one, one prayer request. She says that, that she would be able to feel things. What would happen if God's people would have one prayer request before God and say, God, I want to feel spiritual pain when I, when I sin, when I make a mistake, and I, and, and, and I, and I, 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 I I do things that I'm not supposed to. God, heal my heart. Heal my life so that, so that I will be able to sense what, what is pleasing to you and what is not pleasing to you. I, I want to be so sensitive. I want the Spirit of God to be so sensitive in my spirit that I would sense spiritual pain in my life. This happens to lepers. Uh, uh, many times a leper... When he gets leprosy, he will not be able to feel pain. In the same way, sin does the same, same thing to our spiritual life. It begins to eat away our fingers and our toes. And we think, oh, I'm okay. I'm still, I'm a, I'm still alive. And we don't understand how terrible, how terrible spiritually sin is. The sinner commits his life to evil and he loses his sensitivity towards sin. In the, the verse we read, it says, the sinner work, works are all uncleanness. It, mean, it means, that, you know, the, the word work there means he, he works hard. He, he, he takes pains to, 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 to commit his sin. And, and uh, it, it goes on and it talks about uh, greediness and how that, uh, that it simply means that he does not want, he does what he does for self-gratification. And how, ma how, many, how many people, even people in this church, the only, uh, the only thing they know is self-gratification. They they come to church and, and they try to find a girl or try to find a guy that will, will, will please them and will, will meet their physical needs. And, and, and they don't realize how terrible, how terrible sin is and how much it will eat away at you and how much it will destroy your life if you, if you allow yourself to be given over to, 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 to sexual sin or immor immorality or, or, or some of these other things that, that, grat that gratify the flesh. But but, but don't meet your spiritual needs. It, uh, it says they give themselves over to the lust of the, uh, of the flesh that drive them. Uh, they do it for their own benefit and never stopping to consider that the, the truth that, the, uh, that their endless pursuit of wickedness will end with them being totally lost from God. Totally lost. That's, but that's how the lost live. They, they, they do it for themselves because they're blinded. They, they have a problem with their head. They, they don't understand. They have a problem with their heart. They, they, ha they, they don't feel. They, they have a problem with their, with, with their wor works. They, 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 they're doing them just to meet their own needs. But just think about it. God's called us to be different. God's called us to be different. Verse 20 says, but you have not so learned Christ. Ephesians 4.20. You have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. In other words, Christ is our example. The, the, the lost are motivated by their lust, but, but the Christian should be motivated by, by what Jesus is like. We have Jesus as our example. We, uh, Jesus told the disciples, Follow me. And for three, three, three and a half years, they followed Jesus. And, and they learned Jesus. And I'm here to tell you that if you, will, that if you will make the decision, if you will understand that Jesus Christ has called each one of you to, 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 to put away those things in your life that are not pleasing to God and to say, I'm, I'm, from this day forward, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ. It is amazing what will happen. 
Do you understand that God wants to do great works in your life? God wants to do great things in your life. If you will trust God, if you will believe God, God will change your life. I, I, I can probably, if you, if, you will, if you will give your life to Jesus Christ, if you turn your life over to Him now, I can promise you that, that in 10 or 15 years, you'll look back and, and you'll say, I, could never, I never imagined that this would happen to me. I never thought that, that I would be where I am today. If, you will, if you'll commit every day to serving, every day reading your Bible, every day praying, every day just determined to let Jesus Christ be Lord of your life and everything. He is our example. And, and what did he do? As was his custom, he went aside and he prayed. As was his custom, he went aside and talked to his father. I can tell you right now that, that when my wife and I, when my wife and I ended up in, in Kiev, we thought, wow, we never thought we'd ever be in Kiev. God sent us to Kiev. And then when we ended up in, in, the, in, in Nalchik, in the Caucasus Mountain, the Kafkaz, Ka Ka Caucasus Mountain, we had, we had never heard of the Kafkaz. We never heard of the Caucasus Mountain. We never heard of it. And we thought, wow, it's amazing where God's brought us. You know, this is amazing. And, it, and, and look where we are. We never wanted to come to Moscow. In fact, when we were first asked to come to Moscow, we said, no, thank you. And then, and then for a solid week, as my wife and I prayed, and as my wife and I did our devotions, we would read the Word of God, and we would pray. And for, for a week, for a week, God, every time we read the Bible, it said, go to Moscow. Every time we prayed, we'd hear God say, go to Moscow, you know. Guess why we're here? Because we, we want to be where God wants us. When we first came, somebody said, how long are you going to stay? Well, I can understand that kind of because uh, a lot of people come and go. And, 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 we, and my answer was, we're here as long as God wants us to be here. And we, when God doesn't want us to be here anymore, we won't be here anymore. We, we want to be where God wants us to be. We don't care where it is. Uh, it it could be in the, in the Caucasus Mountains, or it can be in the Kiev, or, or it can be, who, who knows, maybe, maybe in... The Earl Mountains, it doesn't make any difference. The, the, the greatest thing that we have found out, my wife and I, is that if you'll serve Jesus Christ, if you'll follow Jesus Christ, wherever you are, that's where happiness is. Wherever you are, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Wherever you are, God will, God will watch over and protect you. It doesn't make any difference how many, how many wars we lived through in Nalchik. It doesn't make any difference how many tanks drove up and down our street. God's hand is over you when you're following him. When you choose, I, I, I take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Christ is our example. The phrase that we just read, the, you have learned Christ, refers to being saved. When he saved us, he challenged us. He changed us. He made us like himself and He's delivered us from being like the world. Uh, not only that, but we, we, Christ is our educator. God, Jesus wants to teach you. The, the redeemer of the Lord should no longer be ignorant or trapped uh, in, in, in the 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 deceptions of their mind, but they have accepted Jesus Christ. They've made him Lord. They, they have been taught the truth. They've been brought out of death into life. They, they have been placed on a different path. They have been taught, and as a result, they have been changed by the power of Almighty God. So, so many times you, you see people come to church, and, and you know where they are spiritually. You know whether, whether they're lost or whether they're not by, 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 by their whole Demeanor, either they're happy or they're not. Either they dress like the world or they dress like, they dress like, like, 
Christians do good. I, 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 I want to be honest with you. You should never date a girl that does not love the Lord. And, and you should be, be around her long enough in church to see uh, what she does while, when she's in church. You should never date a guy who does not love the Lord. And you should be around, if you're going to, thinking about dating him, you should spend a few Sundays with him, like, like maybe uh, 15 or 20 Sundays, and see uh, what he does in church. Does he, does he raise his hands and praise the Lord? Does, does, does he give glory and honor when he sings? Does, hey, does he get into the music, or, or is he sitting there with his hands in pocket saying, I, I'm, too, I'm too cool to sing. I'm too cool to clap my hands. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Christ comes to you and he changes you. And and if he changes you, then you need to date somebody that has been changed by the power of God. Somebody, Somebody that knows that God is God and his word is true. When Christ came to us, he brought us with, with him in knowledge and truth. He taught us, he taught us about God. He, we, we learn about himself and about it, the spirit. And we learn about heaven. We learn about hell. We learn about sin. We learn about salvation. Do you understand Jesus Christ has come to educate us so that when, when, we, when, when we're tempted to do something and we're following Jesus, what we say to ourselves, no, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because we never know when Jesus is going to come. And the worst thing you could do is be, be, be caught in the middle of a sin when Jesus comes. Now, you never know what's going to happen. I didn't know yesterday I was going to fall on my face and, and sprain my arm. I, I didn't know that. If I'd have known that, I would have not tried to act like this. My wife says, you're not in your 30s anymore, Jerry. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. But falling on my hand and spraining my wrist is nothing compared to missing Jesus when he comes. Do you hear what I'm saying? In John chapter 16, verse 13, it says the spirit of truth has come. That's what God wants you to have, the spirit of truth in your heart. God's, in fact, when you accept Jesus Christ, the spirit of God comes into your life and creates in you a new spirit. It's the spirit of God. It's the spirit of truth. And, and you are a new creation when Jesus comes in. And, and from that, that moment forth, the Spirit of God will, every time you hear something, the Spirit of truth will, within you will say, that's of God, that's not of God, that's of God, that's not of God. The Spirit of truth has come that he can guide you. God wants to guide you into all truth. Jesus has become your educator. The Apostle John said, we know that the Son of God came and gave us understanding that we could know him that is true, that we could know him that is true. And we in turn, we are in turn, excuse me, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. So we... We are to be different from the world. We are to be discerning from the world. And last but not least, we are to be decisive. God wants you to make a decision. Ephesians 4, 22, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. In other words, you need to decide, I used to do this, I cannot do that anymore. I used to go here. I cannot do that anymore. You are to make make decisions as as the spirit of truth begins to weigh on your heart. Uh, The spirit of God will will tell you, don't go there. Don't say this. Don't take that. 
Don't, don't drink that. The spirit of truth will begin to lead you. And he wants you to change the way you lived. Again, it says, it says that you put off concerning the former conduct. In other words, you stop doing what you used to do. Why? Because the spirit of the living God will lead you in the way that you're to go. Paul says in Galatians 5, 16, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Praise the Lord. How many of you are here and you say, Pastor, I'm a, I'm a Christian, but I haven't been serving God like I should. I've really been blowing it, really been making mistakes. I've been following anybody and everybody except Jesus, but today I want Jesus Christ to be Lord, and I choose to follow him and to find out where he lives and to follow him. You'd raise your hand and say, pray for me. Father God, I pray, I pray for each person under the sound of my voice. Lord, that they would not leave this place. They would not leave this room until they have committed their life wholly and completely to your precious Son. God, I pray, Lord, that every person here under the sound of my voice would, would not go through that door until, until Jesus Christ is Lord over every area of their life. They commit themselves to make Jesus Lord over every area of their life. God, that they would find out where Jesus lives and realize that's the place they want to be. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity to share your word. Lord, I pray that you will water it. Your spirit will water it. It will produce much fruit in Jesus' name.